Hello, family, and welcome back to episode nine of season two of the Good News Network. I'm Luke Speckman. And I'm Brandon Speckman. And we're here today to share with you some of the incredible milestones, leadership transitions, and other thrilling events witnessed across our worldwide family of churches this past month of Mountain Moving May. Today, we have some very encouraging announcements along with a very special opportunity to witness a day in the life of our dear brother, Gainesville evangelist, Austin Devine, the very first blind evangelist ever to be appointed in the sold out movement. But before we continue, we'll go over to our World Sector Administrator, Dr. Michael Kirshner of Los Angeles for an exciting announcement. Hello family, my name is Michael Kirshner and I'd personally like to thank all of our USA churches who participated in our missions collection this spring. Your love and your support in the advancement of God's kingdom has welled up in rich generosity and its impact will only fully be known in heaven. So we're so excited to share with you that the USA churches were able to give an astounding $5 million, which will go towards the planting of new churches, the ongoing support of many of our third world churches, and the training of more missionaries here in America. This is the most that the American International Christian Churches have ever given in a single missions contribution. So please join me with my lovely wife, Sharon, and me in praising God for this unprecedented victory that will change the course of human history. And in time, it's gonna change the eternal destiny for so many more to go to heaven. And to God be all the glory. Back to you, Luke and Brandon. So phenomenal. Thank you so much, Michael. And another piece of amazing news is that with the special missions contribution collected this spring, we can now anticipate the planting of 24 congregations in 2022. This will be by far the largest number of churches ever to be planted in a year's time in the sold out movement's history. It's been so blow away to see how God's spirit has been ushering in so many new milestones. In fact, this past month on May 15th, the City of Angel International Christian Church in Los Angeles celebrated its 15th anniversary as its inaugural service was on May 6, 2007. Now, most of you are too young spiritually to remember that the first huge milestone to be seen in the Jerusalem church of our movement was that God blessed the 42 gallant Portland disciples on the mission team with 104 baptisms in their first year of being planted. Since then, they have continued to be a shining example to all of our now 131 congregations in the international Christian Church family, setting the pace and preparing the way for even greater things, just as in Los Angeles collecting $1.5 million for the, this year's Spring Missions Collection. Of historical note, God poured out His blessing for the first church to break LA's record for the most baptisms within the first year as our radiant Metro Manila Church, planted in 2014, witnessed 134 souls baptized. The next to break that record was the New Delhi India Spartan Mission Team in 2018 with 141 baptisms. And now in 2022, the Yaoundé Cameroon Mission Team of 11 Abidjan Disciples and led courageously by Amadou and Angela Centura is on pace to smash the first year record with already 135 baptisms in their first 11 months. We are so eager to see how much more fruit our Savior will grant through the remainder of their first year. Another inspirational milestone springs from the Dallas-Fort Worth campus ministry with the baptism of Zacharias Contreras on May 1st. They broke the 100 campus disciples barrier. Equally encouraging is that in Abidjan, Ivory Coast, their campus ministry is now over 200 disciples. And of course, we have to lift up Chicago, which now is 350 disciples strong and is the epicenter of our dynamic Pac World sector, which, get this, has grown from 400 100 to 900 disciples in a little over two years. All glory to God as he builds his church. We know God will continue to do more than we could ask or imagine in the coming months. And now two very crucial announcements. The first by Nick Bordieri, the Mercy Worldwide World Sector Leader, and the second by Dr. Tim Kernan, the director of the 2022 Global Leadership Conference. It brings me great joy to announce that the 2022 International Day of Mercy, our 13th annual theme, Bridging the Gap, will be on June 18th. Mercy is an acronym which stands for Maximizing Efforts for Relief, Care, and Youth. Our annual Day of Mercy brings together our Mercy ambassadors from around the globe to participate in various projects in their cities, as every sold-out movement disciple is a Mercy ambassador. 
founded in 2008 by our movement leaders, Dr. Kip and Elena McKean, Mercy Worldwide, after this year's Day of Mercy, will have spearheaded over 1,000 projects ranging from home makeovers for cancer survivors, to building schools for the less fortunate, to funding third world orphanages, to responding to the devastating refugee crisis in the war-torn country of Ukraine. Please ask your local Mercy Coordinator how you can get involved today. Denise and I thank you for being true family as we proclaim Jesus collectively through our compassion in action. Greetings, family. Since we have shared in the miraculous missions contribution in May as a movement, we can now focus on registering for the International Campus Leadership Seminar on August 7th through the 9th and the Global Leadership Conference on August 10th through the 14th. Both of these will be life-changing events. The ICLS theme, Company of Profits, is from Dr. Jason Dimitri's brilliant ICCM doctoral dissertation, now a sold-out press book, whose chapters will serve as the speech and class titles that will surely enhance our blossoming campus ministries. Registration is $100. The 2022 GLC, One in the Spirit, will be our first in four years because of our every other year format and the pandemic quarantines. Lord willing, over 3,000 will attend from over 50 nations around the world. Included during these days are the ICCM Chancellor's Gala, the Church Builders Workshop, various special ministry summits, and of course the GLC itself, which features sensational singing, unforgettable fellowship, phenomenal preaching, along with the Kingdom Banquet and the ICCM Commencement. Though some of the aforementioned events have additional registration costs, the base registration fee is $250 for First World Disciples, $200 for present ICCM students, and $100 for Developing World Disciples. Yet mark this, the impact of these days will be priceless. You may register at any Sold Out Movement church website. Lord willing, we will see you this August. Many transitions are happening this summer, but the following are just a few to especially pray for in June. Lord willing, Raja and Debs Rajan, the current overseeing ministry couple for our South Asia churches, will move from New Delhi to Miami to further their training. And in turn, Brandon and I will be moving to New Delhi, where we'll oversee the churches in India and Nepal, as well as plant the remaining seven nations in South Asia, which is part of the Sages World Sector. Last week, Brandon and I had the honor to hand over the leadership of the New York City Church to Middle East World Sector leaders Corey and G. Blackwell, thus transitioning the Sages North churches into the Middle East World Sector. And with the departure of Corey and G from their beloved San Diego, Stacy and Lynette Ybarra of Los Angeles have assumed the mantle of leadership for the San Diego church family. Also, the Philadelphia church has just welcomed their new leaders, Jonathan and Keanu Davis, formerly of the AMS region of New York City. In turn, the New York City, New Jersey region is soon to welcome Nick and Dale Infantino, who will assume leadership there until December 22, when prayerfully the spirit propels the Infantinos to plant the Middle East nation of Bahrain. Evangelist and women's ministry leaders, Jordan and Alyssa Swan will be joining Brandon and me as we make our way to India along with our son and his amazing wife Malik and Natalie Speckman who were just married on May 14th. Since the six of us on the New Delhi Supplemental Mission Team compose much of the GNN staff, this means that the GNN headquarters will now be moving from New York to New Delhi. Also in Sages, Dylan and Jasmine Harding of the Los Angeles Church will soon be welcomed by the Thomasville and Tallahassee Church, known as TNT, to lead the campus ministry at Florida State and Florida A&M for a year before planting the Operation Eagle Church in Columbia, South Carolina. As you can see, the Los Angeles Church has been so sacrificial in sending leaders to plant and strengthen churches around the world. And in June, many of our churches are sending disciples and leaders back to LA to strengthen them. Most significant of these transitions are Fernando and Jackie Chavez, who will be moving from Dallas-Fort Worth to the East Region in LA with a supplemental group of 23 other Texas disciples. Excitingly, Joey and Karen Gregory will be taking the Chavez's place 
in DFW. Lastly, the remarkable planters of the Baguio City Philippines Church, Mark and Micah Carbonell, who were converted in Los Angeles, will soon return to Manila, Philippines as super region leaders. Josh and soon-to-be Maru Hayanos, already in Baguio City, will be married at the conclusion of the Pacific Rim Missions Conference and have raised up to assume the Baguio leadership. The Spirit is orchestrating so many plantings and transitions, further spreading and at the same time strengthening our family of churches. Please be in fervent prayer for the mission teams to be officially sent off this June to Portland, Maine, Manchester, New Hampshire, Kampala, Uganda, and Naga, Philippines. And now we're so excited to jump into our Day in the Life segment following our beloved brother, Austin Devine, the Gainesville, Florida church leader. My name is Austin Devine. I was baptized in Gator Nation, Gainesville, Florida, uh, on September 9th, 2016. I was asked to come back to Gainesville to lead the church here. Gainesville just, it just has a special place in my heart. It's such a, a great city filled with incredible dreamers. Uh, when I was about two or three years old, my, my right eye, it, um, it hemorrhaged, meaning it started bleeding internally. And so they had to enucleate it, uh, meaning they had to take it out. So this eye, I don't know if you can, it's totally fake, so I can touch it, I can, you know, whatever. Uh, it looks real, uh, but that's kind of the, the point of it being fake. It's supposed to look real. And in the process of it bleeding internally, the uh, eye disease kind of transferred over to my left eye as well, but they were able to salvage this eye. And so from about three until 19, I had about 50% vision in one of my eyes. This sport that I play, it's called goalball. And at the um, higher levels, the ball travels upwards to 40, 50 miles an hour. And at one of the tournaments, I laid out to block a ball from going into the goal and I didn't block my face properly. And so it, it hit me right in the face and it tore all the working parts of my good eye. Uh, and so about 10 days after I got hit in the face, uh, I noticed my vision was deteriorating fast and I went to the doctor and they said, yeah, dude, your eye is totally messed up. You're gonna have to go through a lot of surgeries. So from the point I was 19 until now I'm 27, uh, I've been totally blind, had many surgeries, none have worked. Normally I get up around uh, between six and 7 a.m. Uh, and I always, always, always immediately start off with a cup of coffee, I get to my desk. Uh, I hop into the scriptures usually first. Uh, I'll say a quick prayer, get into the Bible. Uh, and so 10 a.m., uh, I'm kind of full swing. I'm on campus usually. I try to go for like two to five studies uh, a day. Um, obviously D times get sprinkled in there. Um, I try to uh, have a lot of impromptu fellowship times. Then between five and seven, I do a little, I usually have a little downtime, have a meal, get some time with the brothers um, and just kind of regroup a little bit. Uh, and then usually 7 p.m. to about 10 p.m. normally meetings of the body. So if it's Wednesday night, usually a midweek, uh, you know, Friday nights, a Devo, um, or maybe if it's Tuesday or Thursday, usually there's some kind of Bible uh, discussion group going on. Coming into the kingdom, I, I wanted to be that person who could do everything on his own uh, and who could be someone who didn't need to rely on others. But what I quickly found out was that was leading me down a very tough path of discipleship. Uh, being in leadership, actually, it's, it's so cool because the one thing that's been, uh, that I've learned the most is that when I rely on other people, not only does it help me, but it totally helps them to rise up and to learn so many lessons they wouldn't otherwise have learned if I just took hold of everything. I never thought in a million years that I could have people in my life that were closer to me than my physical family. And when I look at some of my best friends, I look at people who they've gone out of their way time and time again to do everything in their power to lay their life down for me. I can't wait to see you guys all at the 2022 GLC. Love you, family. Thank you so much, Austin, for leading the way in great faith and inspiring the movement as you, alongside our dear sister, Megan Matthews, lead the Gainesville Church. And now it's time for good news from around the world. On May 15th, the fiery Jacques Mel Church, led by the dynamic Jean Bernard and Loverly Colleen, saw the mountain-moving baptism of a local denominational preacher. Upon visiting the church, Elancier Marcin realized that he was seeing the kingdom for the very first time. At the conclusion of service, Elancier was baptized into Christ, 
with the hopes of winning over his family and his denominational congregation as well. This makes the 36th denominational or mainline Church of Christ preacher baptized in Haiti since 2013. With these Apollos-like conversions, God has grown the work in Haiti from one mainline Church of Christ preacher to now 13 congregations, numbering well over 700 disciples. So amazing. Now, the Johannesburg Church, led powerfully by Africanist world sector leaders, Dr. Andrew and Patrice Smelly, witnessed professional actor Natendazo Peter, a current star on the hit South African TV drama, Generations, radically changed before their very eyes. He repented from his homosexual lifestyle and chose instead to become a shining star in the ever-darkening universe of the secular media. The Mighty Paris Church and their esteemed leaders, Anthony and Cassidy Almo, celebrated Mother's Day and missions with 102 in attendance. Praise God, this congregation not only surpassed their challenging missions prayer goal, but they ended this glorious service with the baptism of Elsa Tran, an incredible 20-year-old French and Vietnamese Dancing Academy student. Elsa was a former atheist who was impacted by the love of God expressed in the Paris Fellowship. She is so grateful to be part of God's worldwide kingdom. It's so beautiful to see women changed by God's word. And on May 7th, the Guam Church held its first ever Women's Day entitled Fully Known. With just 26 sisters, there were 91 visitors for a total of 117 in attendance. This beautiful event was led by Guam Women's Ministry Leader, Crystal O'Connor, and the keynote speaker was none other then the movement shepherdess, Therese Antelon, who was crowned Miss Guam in 1985. Amongst the beautiful faces present were all four of Teresa's sisters, as well as the 2016 Miss Guam. Another powerful Women's Day was hosted on May 28th in Mexico City, inspirationally led by Linda Moreno. The guest speaker, Rachel McGee of Tampa and former Mexico City missionary, delivered a maravillosa keynote address. With the name Victoriosa, the Lord gave 125 sisters a victorious attendance of 250, four baptisms and one restoration. As well, three men were baptized that Sunday. As most are aware, Mike and Chanel Patterson lead the fast multiplying Boston Church. Their evangelistic charge is to plant congregations in every state in New England. In this quest, they sent out the Providence, Rhode Island mission team in 2021. Even so, as of the end of May, the Boston Church has seen 28 baptized into Christ in the first 21 weeks of 2022. They are also sending 25 disciples to plant two new churches, the first in Portland, Maine, and the other in Manchester, New Hampshire. As they continue to send out their very best, they are raising up new leaders such as Christina Wilson, a recent Harvard graduate who is sacrificing the benefits of this prestigious degree to go into the full-time ministry. Congratulations, Christina. So extraordinary are the French-speaking African churches, overseeing by Blaise and Patricia Fumba. The Spirit worked through their prayers to witness 39 baptisms and six restorations during the last week of May. Of special note, 19 of those 39 baptisms and all six of the restorations took place in the Kinshasa Church on May 29th, while their lead evangelist, Mickey Ngungu, is in India for extensive cancer treatments. We are praying for you, Mickey. Also, Danilo and Carol Bataglin, who planted the Lima, Peru Church with just seven disciples, reported that on May 29th, the 58 Lima disciples celebrated their third anniversary in the best way possible with their largest attendance to date with 122 and two remarkable baptisms, Caddy in the campus ministry and Pilar in the marriage ministry. In the Eurasian world sector, the church in Lviv, Ukraine continues to host services despite the ongoing conflict between Russia and the Ukraine. For the month of May, at almost every Sunday service, there are as many non-Christians as disciples in attendance. In May, our Kiev sister Angelina Tutareva visited the church and invited her friend Yana. After the service, Yana shared that she had not experienced this amount of joy in a very long time. She cried with the sisters, amazed at their unity and the love she felt from them. She is studying and all in Eurasia are praying for more souls to not only be touched, but baptized. Please keep our family in Russia, in the Ukraine and their neighboring countries in your prayers. On May 29th, the Sydney Australia Church hosted the first ever Austral China International College of Christian Ministries commencement. God blessed them with 14 graduates, including full-time ministry workers Aaron and Fang Ha, as well as James Kwok and Lan Yang, the Crouching Tiger 
one leaders. Around the world, ICCM is our tool to raise up future generations of leaders. Also, especially thrilling for this world sector, their charismatic leader, Joe Willis, who happens to be dyslexic, will be one of five to receive their ICCM doctorate degrees at the August 2022 GLC commencement. Now, in the month of May, over 50 countries celebrate Mother's Day. So we're closing out this episode with just a few of our incredible mothers who made Jesus their Lord during this month. In New York City, the sophisticated Soul Sip Bible Talk created to reach women who are more mature in life has provided a spring of hope as they reach out to so many women around them. In fact, in New York City, we now have 16 moms who have children who are disciples in our congregation. And 10 of those moms were baptized over the last two years. The most recent baptism was on Sunday, May 29th with Kalia Campbell's mother, Sharon. The ripple effect has been incredible. The saints in Salt Lake City also witnessed the beautiful transformation of yet another mom. Jeff Rangel has been praying for years for his mom, Edna Gomez, to become a true Christian. Just recently, she studied the Bible, counting the cost on what making Jesus her Lord and Savior would truly mean. At the end of the studies, deeply moved, she said, can I get baptized tonight? I don't wanna wait. What an incredible heart for God. It warms my heart to see all of the faithful prayers throughout the years answered one mom at a time, no matter what it takes. Now, a great example is shown in Kit McKean's fervent prayers as he was baptized April 11th, 1972. So for 50 years, Kip has been begging God to move in the heart of his now 93 year old mother, Kim McKean. After years of hearing Kip's and his younger brother, Randy's sermons, reading the good news emails and watching every GNN and in February, after Kip gave her a super large print Bible, she agreed to study the first principles, which incidentally raised money for the McKean Scholarship Foundation, which is dedicated to Kip's dad and mom. Now, due to Miss McKean's emphysema and heart issues, a three-day quarantine and negative COVID test was requested by her in order to study the Bible with her in person. After quarantining after each flight to Orlando in February, April, and May, Kip was honored to baptize into Christ his beloved mother on May 21st. So to close out this momentous report of Mountain Moving May, we'd like to share with you a clip of the baptism of our new sister, Kim McKean. What a moment! Yes. Woo. Uh, a dream come true. Oh, yeah. And uh, mom, what an honor to be able to baptize you. Yeah. What an honor to have you too. <laughs> Thank you. And now, in keeping with the scriptures, I have two questions for you. Do you believe that Jesus Christ came to earth, died for your sins, was resurrected on the third day, and is now in heaven? Yes, I do. And what is your good confession? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's awesome. Woo! Here you go. Okay, <laughs> put, your, put your hands together. Remember on your wrist? I, I got you, I got you. All right, all right. I got you. Okay. On your yeah. wrist and then hold your nose. Plug your hold nose. Your nose. Plug, yeah. I have to take a breath. Yeah. <laughs> Adios. Adios. Congratulations, Ms. McKean. We look forward to broadcasting our next GNN episode from New Delhi, India, and releasing it at the 2022 GLC Sunday in Los Angeles. This is Luke and Brandon Speckman reporting to you from the Good News Network. The best news you'll ever see.